Hello and welcome in this session we are going to learn about MySQL database in cloud. So basically if you can see uh, we are going to uh, discuss a little bit about of uh, MySQL presence in the cloud basically in AWS which is Amazon uh, Web Services or uh, in Azure, which is Microsoft uh, proprietary, then you have Google Cloud Service and then uh, Oracle Cloud. So basically, MySQL as a managed service in cloud is available with four major players. So let's let's start with it. So let, let, let's go and have a, a view of how MySQL has been positioned in cloud with respect to AWS. So AWS has given a, a very good place for MySQL in the cloud. So, so in case your uh, MySQL database uh, in, in your data center is logged in because of the legacy application and they cannot go to the, uh, the higher versions or they cannot go to the cloud either in EC2 instance or maybe on RDS instance. In that case, uh, they, you have to do some kind of lift and shift or basically uh, if you wanted to go the way you are working in your uh, uh, on-premises environment you have the flexibility of going to the uh, cloud as uh, in EC2 which is uh, like your uh, virtual machine the way you are working in on-premises so that is one of the option in AWS Otherwise, uh, you if uh, if there is no such kind of restriction, because when you go with MySQL in uh, in um, AWS as a managed service, it is available as RDS for MySQL, and a fork out of that is available as uh, 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 as MariaDB. Uh, basically, they they are uh, they are nearly same, so you can choose. Uh, going to that otherwise uh, you have the option of uh, having the uh, amazon um, aurora which is uh, a cluster kind of service for mysql and postgres so you can have uh, a check on those so if you are going to choose either the ec2 or rds you have you the, the way you work it, it is going to be changed if you are choosing ec2 then the way you have been working in the on premises environment it will remain same but if you are working on rds then a the lot of things are going to change because the uh, the kind of day-to-day uh, uh, -day work which you work on uh, on MySQL, let's say the backup and other parts, the patching and other stuff, those will be taken away from you. The uh, SSH access to the operating system will be taken away. And uh, uh, let's say you have your application established in your own premises environment, those things will be taken away and they will be available as the managed service. So a lot of things are available as uh, RDS uh, because everything is a managed one. But in fact, uh, you need to think whether your application is going to be compatible when you go to the managed instance because in terms of the the capacity of the storage it, I believe it is 16 terabyte you cannot go beyond that and uh, if you go on EC2 I believe it will it will be applicable up to where your uh, EC2 instance can have the maximum storage CPU and the RAM that's all about the uh, MySQL, world's number one open source uh, database in, in cloud and uh, AWS is giving a lot of flexibility for that. So there are a lot of options, either you go for uh, MySQL as an RDS instance or you go with the EC2 instance or you can you can go for the uh, the cluster solution which is uh, Amazon Aurora cluster if you have a lo lot of read operations which is happening then you can spin up a lot of read replicas out of your uh, Aurora cluster I believe it is 15 or 16 um, replica 15 replicas and one master read uh, node uh, you can have in Aurora cluster Moving on to the next one, which is uh, Azure database for MySQL. So it is also playing a major role when it comes to the MySQL. So it has been given a very good position in uh, in uh, cloud with respect to the uh, Azure and it's, it's a managed service and it, it, it also gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of the uh, in terms of uh, the management which you perform on day to day basis so those things have been taken away and because these are cloud native databases nowadays so 
there are a lot of uh, services which are available in the azure or if you talk about the aws and if you are uh, uh, using it as a managed service then they can be used so if you talk about uh, modern days uh, computing and if you talk about the ai and ml which is artificial intelligence and machine learning they can be easily integrated with your uh, open source relational databases like mysql going on to the next one google cloud for mysql so mysql as a managed instance uh, is is working really good for google cloud and it is named as uh, cloud sql so under cloud sql they have uh, positioned three relational database one is the uh, mysql another is postgre and sql server so mysql and postgre they are really doing great and uh, as usual all the major cloud service provider they give you tools which are really flexible they can take the data from homogeneous uh, engine or the heterogeneous engine and they can convert your data to the mysql environment uh, the next one in this is uh, Oracle Cloud. So with respect to the open source relational database uh, MySQL, because uh, in terms of uh, MySQL, it has been given a very good position for the managed service for MySQL. And they are uh, actually using the, uh, the experience with respect to the Exadata. The engineer system, uh, uh, which is Exadata for Oracle software, that, that, has, that has been uh, really doing great for uh, since 2008 uh, till now. So they have been using the intelligent hardware from there and uh, they are using the intelligent computing system and uh, the way the throughput is is uh, available from google cloud sorry the oracle cloud is it's really doing great so in terms of the performance uh, they have beaten the uh, the records of uh, both uh, aws or you talk about azure or or even uh, even google cloud as well uh, postgre has not been given any place in google cloud because of uh, the the uh, postgre being one of the competitor of uh, of uh, oracle so if you see all the three, uh, all the four major cloud providers, they have given the place to uh, MySQL in the cloud. So let me show you quickly how it uh, actually looks. If you search for the uh, databases in cloud for AWS, you can see uh, the relational database. Under relational database, you will see Amazon Aurora, which is uh, MySQL and PostgreSQL compatible database. Then you have Amazon RDS. Uh, there you have seven relation, relational databases and uh, and you have MySQL, you have uh, MariaDB, which is a fork out of MySQL, then you have uh, uh, those things are available over here. If you look in uh, Azure database service, and uh, if you see this page, you will be able to see there is a section for Azure database for MySQL and Azure database for MariaDB. So AWS, and uh, azure they have given really a good place for mysql but in terms of capability in terms of the cluster which is being provided by aws it is it is better so they have aurora cluster this kind of clustering solution it is you cannot see over here but in case of uh, google cloud you if you search for google cloud database service you will see cloud sql so cloud sql it contains all the three uh, relational database so you have mysql postgre and sql so in in our case we are talking about mysql so it is it has been given a good place and all the three uh, service providers the major ones AWS, Google, and uh, and Azure. They they give their own uh, tools so that you can migrate from your on-premises environment to to cloud or from other uh, cl cloud providers to the uh, to their on on cloud. And the same is true for. Uh, 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 Oracle Cloud as well. If you search for. Uh, uh, Oracle Cloud, you will be able to see uh, 
the MySQL, which is being provided as a managed service. So all the four uh, cloud service provider, they give uh, MySQL as a managed instance. Apart from that, you have the flexibility of using the, uh, the virtual machines, which can be spin up from their uh, cloud providers, respective cloud providers, and you ca it can be used. So it is exactly the same. You, you are uh, working in your on-premises environment. So basically all the service providers they have given so much of flexibility for mysql so it is it is some kind of uh, uh, insistence from these that you you do at least lift and shift from your on premises uh, environment to to the cloud and in case you are not uh, you have some kind of restrictions in terms of your application and then basically you go go with the managed instance Coming back to the slide again, let's see some basics about the MySQL. MySQL is one of the most uh, world's number one uh, open source relational database. And uh, if you talk about some basic things about MySQL, so uh, the founder of uh, MySQL, uh, uh, it's uh, Michael Widenius, uh, its daughter name, uh, it's my, so, so he, he named it as uh, MySQL. So just making it uh, interesting why it has been named so. And be because of the relational database, the, the data is stored in terms of rows and columns. So you have the structured query language through which you can access the database. So it is SQL compliant. And almost, uh, I think it has 165 uh, parameters it, it uh, supports. And one of the good thing about it, it's an open source relational database under GNU general public license, and it is available uh, as the proprietary license as well from some of the uh, big players. Okay, so this this basic introduction that MySQL was initially owned by the MySQL AB, and in 2010 it was purchased by uh, Micro Sun Microsystem, which was finally taken up by Oracle. So now. Uh, Oracle is the uh, the uh, owner of uh, MySQL project, and uh, there is one fork which which came out of uh, MySQL, which is MariaDB, and uh, and MySQL is is really doing great because this is the best database, uh, the backend database, if you are using anything in LAMP, which is uh, for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and uh, Perl kind of component. MySQL is, has been in news because it is actually used by most of the uh, the world's famous uh, uh, websites like your you talk about Facebook or you talk about the uh, media wiki if you talk about Twitter or Q2 in some or other form they are being used so if it is simply like if it is a web based application so the number one choice is MySQL or MariaDB so initially it was uh, it, it is actually written in C and C++ and the parser is YACC and uh, it is available both as open source relational database and it is also available as enterprise edition with a lot of uh, additional features. So one of the thing is why it is so so fast because because of the kind of the uh, the storage engine which it has and uh, because it is multi-user and it has it has the capability of using the multi-threaded uh, uh, database feature inbuilt. There's just a history like how it was uh, from when it was available since 1994 until. Uh, year 2010 it was being acquired by uh, sun microsystem and after that uh, sun was uh, taken by by uh, oracle corporation so now it's a property of mysql as a property is available with the, uh, with the oracle corporation so if you talk about uh, the versions what what are the different additions available for uh, mysql so mysql is available as the community server and it is also available as enterprise uh, server. So on the regular basis, uh, there is a community which is also available. They, they work on it and uh, they release the extensions and the plugins and uh, it, is, it is shared. So basically it is it goes to the same uh, uh, source codes and uh, and all the uh, developments they, they are, are collected over there. 
uh, since uh, MySQL 5.5 and 5.6, it has been very, very stable. And in, if you still see or if you have in your environment, 5.6 is still one of the uh, the best version, stable version available. So it, it supports uh, ANSI uh, SQL 99 as an extension. It supports your cross-platform. Cross and if you talk about 177 uh, SQL compliance, it supports most of them. And uh, one of the best thing about the RDMS is uh, if they are able to support ACID and uh, this, this really uh, supports. So it has uh, built in uh, replication support in case you wanted to have uh, multiple nodes so that uh, the data can be replicated across using uh, some kind of uh, transaction logs which are available and which is known as bin log in this case. So there are a lot of features and there are different kind of, uh, of storage engines also available according to your requirement. So basically in ODB and MyISAM, they, they are really doing great. If we talk about the, uh, the development, uh, so developers, they keep working on this uh, and uh, the smaller uh, updates are continuously released after every two months. And there is a GitHub where, where they, are, uh, they are actually uh, put up. And the and source code can be used by anyone. And if you want to modify and uh, and further republish it, then it is also available. There are a lot of limitations available because of, or I, I would say, uh, the limitations are imposed because of the uh, different kind of engines which are available. So you need to make sure that you use proper storage engine before you make any decision. So basically, I'm talking about InnoDB and MyISAM. And deployment. If you wanted to do a deploy in your in your environment, you either you go with the source code or for every uh, every platform. Let's say Linux or any other, or Windows or Mac. You have uh, related uh, installables available or softwares are available. Uh, you can deploy it from there. And then cloud deployment. If you talk about the cloud, which is uh, this this presentation is all about. So all the four major uh, service providers for the cloud, they uh, they provide it as a managed service. Other than that, if you wanted to have it as a virtual machine from the cloud providers, you can use them as well. Uh, if you, in case you wanted to access your uh, MySQL database. Uh, you have uh, MySQL Workbench, which is available, so you can use that. Other than that, you uh, Heidi SQL is also available. You can use uh, DB Weaver or Database uh, Workbench or Adminer. You can use. So these are the open source uh, uh, GUI tool, uh, which which uh, through which you can uh, work on the development part, or if in case you wanted to manage your uh, MySQL database. Uh, you can use but mysql uh, through the mysql workbench it is it is really doing great you can use the mysql command line interface as well to directly interact with your your database so uh, the command line tool is as well available and it's really very very easy to use there are different uh, project folks which came out of this uh, uh, one is the MariaDB and other is Percona uh, server for MySQL. So basically, they work the same way. The My, MySQL is working and uh, you can use uh, according to your requirement uh, out of uh, these uh, project folks as well. And that's that's all about it. So basically, MySQL as a managed service is doing really great uh, because of the uh, the, the uh, speed with, with which it is providing for all the LAMP uh, applications. And if it is a web-based application, this is the number one choice for, for your uh, database. And other thing is, uh, since it is being provided by all the major cloud service provider, that means it is, it is really doing great. I, I think this is going to help and uh, uh, thank you.